Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo, and this evening I would like to share the Lord's words from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 18, as well as verses 28 to 30. But before that, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your kindness, your goodness, your sacrifice on the, on the cross, O oh Lord. Father, this evening we remember the fact that all things work together for good, God. And we know whatever is going on in our lives, we know, God, that you are in control. Even when we think as if the situation is out of control, but we realize, Father, you are greater than everything that we are going through. And this evening we thank you, we praise you, we are ready to learn your words together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's read together from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 18. And then after that, we're going to go on to the verses 28, 29, and 30. Here we go. For it will be like a man going on a journey, who caught his servants and entreat to them, entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability then he went away he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more so also he who had the two talents made two talents more but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money Verse 28, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has will more be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place. Will, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My brothers and my sisters, when Jesus talked about these parables, this parable about the talents, Jesus was comparing it to the kingdom of heaven, how it would be, how the Lord will handle matters when he comes back to the earth the second time. Jesus Christ is coming back soon, but we don't know when. The Bible says that he is coming soon. So we must be ready every day. Just like those three servants, to one was given five talents, to another one two, and to another one one talent. Each of us, we were given talents when we were born. Now, for each and every one of us who are willing to put the talents into work or to trade with them, we will get more talents. And Talents here is not just talking about money, but it is the talents that you have, that I have. Perhaps one of you have a musical talent. You're gifted with music. Perhaps another person is gifted with the study of medicine. To another, the study of law. To another, gift for doing business. To another one, a gift to speak, to preach. To another person, perhaps a gift of encouraging others. Words of encouragement to write. And to another person, perhaps they're given a talent to be able to build things, fix things. Each of us, we have talents inside of us. Perhaps you feel, oh, I'm not as talented as this person. I'm not as talented as that, as that person. But one, that, one of the things that we have to understand is that to each one, the Lord gives talents according to their ability. So each of us, we're given talents that fits with our personality, that fits with the things that the Lord wants us to do in this life. Each of us, we have different callings. Each of us, we are called to do different things. Another to uh, another person, to another person, it might be a business calling. To another person, it might be a calling to be in the ministry. To another person, perhaps to do both. And to another, perhaps to be a doctor, to be a missionary, to be a business person, to be an, an entrepreneur. Whatever it might be, we know that all the talents that we have, they all come from God. The problem here happened with the 
servant that had the one talent. He just went and dug it away. And when the master came back, we learned towards the verses after verse 18 and coming into verse 28, 29, and 30, that servant that had the one talent basically did nothing with the talent. And what happened was that one talent that he had was given to the guy who had five talents, and then he had made five more. He had 10 at the time, and he was given this man's talent. It became 11 talents. Now, if we don't do anything with the talents that the Lord already entrusted us with, then the talents that we actually have will not grow. Well, I have to tell you, in my own experience, I, when I started learning music, I first started to learn how to play the drums. But I knew very early on I was not gifted to read music. However, I knew I loved music. So I found out that actually as I began taking drum lessons, I was able to play the drums by ear. So I didn't really know how to read the notes, but I was able to follow along with music. And then from there, I learned to play the piano and the guitar. And those gifts I now use to serve the Lord, to worship Him. And, and the amazing thing is, the gifts that I have, I'm able to use to connect with the non-Christians, people who might not have been in church before, to share with them the music that I make, or the, about the music that they make, and to be able to connect with them in a level that I would not have been able to do so had I not learned any musical instrument. So each of us, with the talents that we have, if we would decide to put it into work, to fix ourselves, to improve ourselves, then those talents surely will multiply, that we would be, we would be able to then have more. If we do not, if we decide to say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm not good at anything, I don't want to do anything in life, oh, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to go to work, then life will be meaningless. And you might say, oh, so many things are wrong in my life, or I didn't have a good childhood, I didn't have a good support system in my family, or I didn't have people around me that is really encouraging me to study, encouraging me to go to school, encouraging me to work. My brothers, my sisters, it's true. There are many difficult things that are happening in life, but we have to remember that we cannot live the rest of our lives blaming the situation, blaming the past, blaming other people. There comes a point in life when we have to stand up and we say, enough is enough. I shall do my best with what I have. Perhaps I would like to start a business, but my funds is not quite enough. My funds, the ones that I have is limited. I couldn't make uh, a huge restaurant maybe, but I would start a small one. Or perhaps you might think that I would like to open up um, a store, I would like to, um, I would have to have a rental property, but then you feel, but my resources, they are limited. If it is limited, my brothers, my sisters, be faithful with what you have. Perhaps you feel, I'm not as gifted as this or that person. But the thing is this, isn't it amazing? I remembered when President George W. Bush had given a commencement um, speech one time, he said that to the C students, you too can become presidents, or something along that line, he said. So the amazing thing is in life is that it's not always the A students who are able to get so far ahead in life. Many times there have been stories where the A students end up working for the C students. And I also remember a book that I, that I read about the founder of Chick-fil-A. If you know the fast food restaurant Chick-fil-A, you might know that the founder had started Chick-fil-A from a small restaurant. And he had said in the book that he, his sacrifice was not making a big business in the beginning, but to make a small one. But he felt good because every night he knew there was positive cash flow coming in and that was good although the business isn't as big at the time as he would have liked it to be but little by little 
it started to grow. The founder of Chick-fil-A was faithful in little things, and the Lord blessed him with greater things in life. In our lives as well, I am sure that every single one of us, at least, we have one talent that the Lord has given us. And you might ask, what is my talent? I don't feel like I'm talented. Well, look, look at yourself. Look at the things you are passionate about. Look at the things that you felt I'm able to do quite effortlessly compared to other people. Or you might take a look at your life and see, say, wow, a lot of my friends are having um, quite a tough time with math, but I found it very easy. Or you might say, many people aren't willing to start a business, but I have the passion to do it and I can see clearly and I'm willing to put in the hard work. Or perhaps you've said, wow, music doesn't come too hard for me. Reading musical notes is quite easy. Of course, talent alone without action, without us trading with it or putting it into work, wouldn't really do much. Just like the servant with the one talent, he had the talent, but he did not put it to work. The Bible here in the ESV version said that the man that had the five talents and the two talents, they traded, they traded with it. And what happened was once they traded with the talents, they gained double the amount. Another translation said that they had put it to work. So, what is, it, the, the, what is the talent that you have today? Maybe you're good at singing. Perhaps you feel like I would like to one day be a famous gospel singer and you're just waiting and waiting for that big day to come. I challenge you, don't just keep waiting. Why don't you come and serve the Lord? Sing at your local church. Why don't you sing and, and Put it up on YouTube, right? Perhaps you feel one day you would like to be a missionary in another country, in a foreign country. It doesn't have to be until that day that you become a missionary. You could be a missionary in your neighborhood, inviting people to come to church, inviting them to come to know the Lord. And Jesus had said in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 10, here's what Jesus said. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If we take a look at the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we learn that when the Lord had created the earth and everything that was in it, <clears throat> He had created it in seven days, six days he worked and one day he rested. But everything took time. There was a process. Day one, he created some things. Day two, he created some things. Day three, more things. Day four, day five, day six. Until finally, the Lord God rested in the seventh day. It shows us that there was a process. Today, in each and every one of our lives, in order to achieve, whether it be a better life or to go through a tough time, everything requires process. When we are patient, when we have self-control, going through the tough times in life, going through the process, to be able to choose to go through it with joy, it will yield much fruit. The process the time that we are going through will produce fruits of the Spirit. Faith, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, so on and so forth as we read in the Bible, in the book of Galatians, all the fruits of the spirits are there. You could read that at home. But the, matter, the, the fact of the matter is this. We have to be faithful in little things in order for the Lord to entrust us with bigger things. The title of today's sermon is Being Faithful in Little Things. Perhaps what you have right now are little things. Be faithful with them. Perhaps what you have right now are big things. Keep being faithful 
pay attention to the little details. Don't feel that I'm too important to take care of the small stuff. Each of us who have been given blessings by the Lord to take care of, whether it be ministry, a business, a home to take care of, great education, we must first be thankful. Second, pay attention to the little things. Let us be like the servants who had the five and the two talents. Who knows? Once you've traded with your five talents and you receive five more, you'll get an extra one from the Lord that you didn't expect. No matter which servant you feel that you are, the one that received the one, the two, or the five talents, let us still be faithful. Let us trade with them, put them into work. And when we do that, we know that the talents that we have will be multiplied. We know that when we do that, our lives will glorify the Lord. Each and every one of the talents we have, let us use it to glorify God. And let us always, every day, put the Lord first in our lives by starting and ending our days with the word of the Lord, with a prayer, knowing that God is in control of your lives and also of my life. This evening, Perhaps this is the first time you've ever heard about the good news from the Lord. I would like to invite you, if there's any one of you who have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and perhaps you feel, I'm not sure where I will spend eternity after the life on earth, I'd like to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, Right now, your servant would like to pray for anyone here who would like to accept you, O Lord God, as their personal Savior. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord God, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And right now, Father, your servant would like to pray for anyone who are listening, anyone who are praying together. Maybe there are those who have been discouraged, God those who feel like they've been going through so many difficult things in life. Maybe there are those who feel like their life has been quite a disappointment, God. Father, I pray, give them strength, Father. Give them peace and joy. And I pray, Lord God, teach each and every one of us to pay attention to the little, little, little things in life, to be able to put into practice, Lord, what we have learned. Teach us, God, to be faithful in the little things. And we know when we do that, you will trust us with big things. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord. We thank you, Father. There is none like you. And this evening, we thank you for the peace, the joy, and the strength that you've given us. Continue, Lord, to minister to each and every one of us. We thank you for the good news that you save, Father. You are our Lord, and thank you for salvation. For you, O Lord God, love the world so much that you gave your only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, so that whoever believes in you, Lord Jesus, will have eternal life. We are not perfect, Lord God, but you are. We are limited, but you are limitless. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, my brothers and my sisters, and I'll see you next time.